Our second case yesterday involved a blue and white Amstaff that came in, um, was taken over to RSPCA as a stray. They said they found it in a street at Rutherford. Um, one of the gentlemen that brought it stayed in the car and the other one brought it in. Um, like anything, we question, where did you find it? Did you door knock? Everything like that. Yep, they said everything right. Um, however, there was a few things that sort of started getting me to think maybe not everything is quite kosher. As it turned out, we scanned the animal and as we tried to scan the animal, it tried to bite me, tried to bite Tani. When we asked the gentleman for some ID, he didn't have any. And as part of the, the forms that we fill in, we need to verify their ID because people lie to us every day. People lie to us about their name, their phone numbers, and what the situation is. As it turns out, once we were able to scan this dog, we were already aware of this dog being trying to be surrendered. What we didn't know, that this dog had been involved in multiple dog attacks, okay? And so the where they were staying, they were given an ultimatum, either the dog went or they went. And instead of being honest about the situation, um, they decided that they would try and bring it to us as a stray. And when we didn't jump through hoops for them, while we were asking them questions, we had our clipboard thrown on the ground. Um, and because we do do our due diligence, we do actually look into every situation. This one was particularly a little bit more worrying because this dog has done thousands of dollars worth of damages to multiple animals. Now, dumping that dog into the pound, it was very scared and was lunging at both me and Tani. And it did try and bite us. Even the guy with the clipboard had to smack him on the head to, to pull, him, pull him back and then tell him to calm down. The first thing that we would be trying to do with that dog in the impound is get that dog's trust. We would be trying to work with that dog so that we could assess the dog. Now, in our testing, the dog's gonna fail. It's gonna fail for our dog testing. You can see that a mile off. Although we have found out that this dog lives with a small dog. But what they've done is they've tried to dump their problem onto us and our motto is every life matters. But what they have done is they've concealed the fact that this dog has been Im involved in multiple incidents. It's not safe to put that dog in the community. They know that, but they, they hid the fact from us. The dog is in someone else's name. It's still in the name of a previous owner. So these dogs, keep coming in because they feel like there's no way we're going to find them. And again, you tell us to do our job, you better be prepared for the consequences because we do our job. And last night, they knew they were caught out. By the end of the day, they knew that I had them. But it was almost very close to dumping that dog and it would go through the motions of being rehabilitated, being tested, and possibly going up for adoption. We can't adopt that dog out. What we have found out is that dog is in, at present going to be possibly having some dangerous dog orders or menacing dog orders on placed on that dog. They were trying to give that dog away before those orders went on. Once, once you've got those orders, the dog's um, housing and everything comes into it has to have a dangerous dog collar has to have a dangerous dog sign if it um, is menacing there's all lots of restrictions if it went dangerous it has to have a cage and these people dumped their problem on us trying to beat the system and it didn't work but they also knew that we were closed for pargo they didn't care about their dog they still brought the dog to us, trying to bring it in to a place that's in 
quarantine. It shows how much little regards people have for not only the facility, but their own animal. That's case number two.